All right, what's up everyone? My name is Mecca, and we are going to be playing some Pokemon TCG online. Now, why are we doing this right now? Because I have a new toaster, and I want to see what its limits are. And Pokemon Train Guard Game Online is a very resource-intensive program. It's uh, got tendency to do memory leaks, so it's a shitty program. And because of that, it is very good to test your toaster. Because uh, if I can handle recording this, then I know I can record just about anything, and the possibilities are wide open. Okay, so I'm going to be explaining a bit about this deck right here. Um, if you have been following the Pokemon Trade Guard game metagame for a while, you probably know what this is. Uh, but to make this video a bit more accessible, I'm going to explain what the cards do. Um, I will put a timestamp somewhere so that you guys know where you can skip to if you don't want the deck explained to you. Because I didn't want to record an actual game with this, but uh, I want this to be sort of... <laughs> well, I wouldn't say educated for I just want it to be like accessible for anyone okay so the Pokemon trading card game I'm not gonna explain the very basics of it so I'm gonna assume you kind of know the rules uh, but I'll just go over what the cards do like uh, it should be familiar with anyone who's played this at any time okay so this deck is based around a bunch of fighting Pokemon mostly Buzzwool uh, this is a deck that Tord Reclef used uh, to great success at one point, he called it like the Buzzwall theme deck because <laughs> it played. It has some very interesting card choices. So this is the main attacker of the deck, I would say. Um, some people call it Baby Buzzwall uh, because there's also a big Buzzwall. Uh, it's the GX, the other guy. Uh, but this is the small guy. This is Baby Buzzwall. And at first sight, it doesn't look very impressive. Sledgehammer does 30 damage for one energy. It's not that great. But the deck has a lot of ways to boost that damage. So um, you've got strong energy, which boosts the damage by 20 when it's attached to a fighting Pokemon like Buzzwool. So that's already 50 for one energy. Uh, if you have a beast or energy, you can only play one of these uh, these Prism Star cards, but uh, beast energy is 30 instead of 20. So it's like a better strong energy for this deck. You can only put in Ultra Beasts, so only on the Buzzwools, but it's still pretty powerful. So that would make it 60 for one energy. Uh, you can also play Fighting Fury Belt to do another 10 extra damage. You can also pay Choice Band to make 30 extra damage, but that would only make it do extra damage to uh, enemy GX and EX Pokemon. Whereas this also works against regular Pokemon, like uh, regular basics. And the other advantage is that this card gives Buzzwool extra HP, like 40 extra HP can be pretty big, so that's nice as well. Um, and but the great thing about this Buzzwool is also, uh, if they are down to four prize cards, you start with six, and if they knock out two Pokemon, they go down to four prizes, because you take a prize every time you knock something out, okay? So at that point, uh, Sledgehammer is not 30 damage, but 120 base damage, because it does 90 extra damage if they have four prizes remaining. And that's really menacing. So the whole deck is kind of based around the idea that you want your opponent to go down to exactly four prizes remaining and then go lose with a Sledgehammer. And four prizes is also huge because then you get to play Beast Ring, which only works if your opponent has exactly three or four prize cards remaining. Then you get to search your deck up. <laughs> you get to search for your deck for up to two basic energy cards. In my case, that would be fighting energy, and you attach into one of your ultra beasts. So you could power up um, this buzzwall with it, and you swing around, so you're not reliant on them being at four prizes. Uh, but you can also use it to power up this beast here, Buzzwall GX, and this is the big version. He gives up two prizes when knocked out instead of one, just like all Pokemon EX and GX. Uh, but its attacks are more powerful. Uh, Jet Punch is 30, and then 32 are random bench Pokemon. Of course, you can also power this guy up further with um, Fury Belt and Strong Energy and all that stuff. So it's not just 30 damage, it might be like 90 damage or something. It's pretty crazy because you can stack all those bonuses. Uh, but if you get a lot of energy on it, you can use Knuckle Impact for 160. Or you can even use Absorption GX, which um, is mostly used to bypass the drawback of Knuckle Impact, which is that you cannot attack next turn if you use Knuckle Impact. Whereas if you use Absorption GX, you can attack next turn. And Absorption GX. Uh, it does damage based on number of prizes you have remaining. Uh, you can't really read it because the, the colors don't really mesh very well, but it basically says this attack does 40 damage for each of your remaining prize cards. So if you have five prizes remaining, it does five times 40. It's 200, which is a knockout on just about anything. Uh, you can only use one GX attack per game though, and there is another GX attack in this deck that's very good, so you don't always want to use Absorption GX when you can, but it is an option, and it's very powerful early in the game. And if a Buzzwell GX survives for two turns, it's probably going to take two knockouts, so a uh, great target for Beast Ring. Uh, next up, we have this Diancie Prism Star that also powers up your other Pokemon. You can only play one of each Prism Star card, but this one is very much worth playing. Princess's Tears is basically the same as Strong Energy. You're fighting Pokemon to do 20 more extra damage. Uh, but Diancie is re really just something you can search out, put it in your bench, and then you got 20 extra damage for the rest of the game until your opponent knocks it out. And if they knock out Diancie, sure, it's gone forever, but at the same time, they spend time KOing a Pokemon that didn't have any energy on it. So that's generally a good thing for you. So a very good card. I like to search this on out early a lot. 
Uh, then we got the Buzzwall Lycan Rock line. Uh, Rock Rock isn't very interesting, but Lycan Rock is great. It's not an Ultra Beast, so it doesn't work with Beast Ring. But uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes is just so good, you can't not play it. Uh, when you evolve Rock Rock into Lycan Rock, you get to use Bloodthirsty Eyes and drag up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Usually the bench is a pretty safe place, but not when Lycan Rock uh, is available. Because you just get to drag something out, some kind of threat on their bench, and just knock it out. Uh, usually I follow up this ability with its attack, Dangerous Rogue GX. It's 50 damage times the number of bench Pokemon they have. That means that if they have 4 bench Pokemon, it already does 200. It's very hard to play around Dangerous Rogue GX. It's almost always going to take a knockout at some point. It only takes 2 energy. Uh, Lycan Rock is a little bit harder to accelerate than uh, the, the Buzz Walls because they're not compatible with B-String. And as you'll see later, Max Elixir is also kind of tricky. Uh, but it's still such a good attack, you can't just not play it. And usually if you have a loose energy attachment somewhere, you're gonna put it on your Lycan Rock just to threaten the Dangerous Rogue. Uh, if it survives long enough, you can also use Claw Slash for 110. Uh, you can boost that further with strong energy and all that jazz. Uh, then we got Octillery. Octillery is really good. Uh, this deck is very aggressive, it takes a lot of prizes, and as a result, it's very vulnerable to N, which I'll discuss in a bit. But generally it means you need late game draw power, and if your opponent disrupts your hands, you might not draw the cards you need. But Octillery pretty much always makes sure that you have the cards you need, because Abyssal, Abyssal Hands lets you draw cards until you have 5 in your hand. And that's really powerful for later on in the game. Um, also a very high priority. It's always kind of tricky to know uh, what Pokémon to search out first, because you can only like grab so many Pokémon in a turn, as you'll see later. All these Pokémon are compatible with Brooklet Hill, which is a stadium that you put into play and it remains there, and you can use it to search out any basic water, or in our case, fighting Pokemon. So you can use it to grab Remoraid, Rockruff, Diancie, Buzzwalls, anything you want, really. Uh, but only once per turn. Uh, Beast Ring, I have discussed. Field Blower, this card wasn't in towards the deck, it's the one card that changed. A lot of decks take advantage of the decks not playing Field Blower. Uh, the ability to remove tools is pretty important. I don't think it lets you beat Garbodor decks per se, but it's nice to have in there as a bit of a surprise. Getting rid of Fighting Fury Belts is helpful. I play Fighting Fury Belt myself, so I know how annoying Field Blower can be. Max Elixir is, besides Beast Drain, the only way to accelerate energy in this deck. Uh, you look at the top 6 of your deck, and then you find the basic energy card, put it on the basic Pokemon on your bench, and then everything else just goes back. So it's like a luck-based acceleration. I don't really like the design of this card, but it's just so good, you can't not play it. Uh, it doesn't work on Evolved Pokemon, so it's just like a rock. so what you want to do a lot of the time is when you play Max Elixir, you want to attach the Rock Rough when you can so that when you evolve, you're ready to use Dangerous Rogue GX. <clears throat> um, Super Rod is a card, normally decks play only like one-off, but this deck plays two. And this is just a great way to get uh, cards that you didn't want to, or you couldn't make use of earlier, get back into your deck. So um, if you discard a lot of fighting energy, you want to put those back in the deck for Max Elixir and Beast Ring. Uh, if you didn't bench, say, a Lycan Rock or a Buzzwell GX, because you didn't want to put an EX in play or a GX in play, you can shuffle those back, it's very helpful. Uh, if you had to like discard an Octillery because he played Sycamore, you have to discard a Lycan Rock, you just put those back, it's great. Um, Ultra Ball is pretty much a standard search card, discard two cards and search any Pokemon. For Brooklet Hill, I think uh, the original deck played like four Ultra Ball and three Brooklet Hill, I reversed them because <laughs> I'm a noob, I, I can't decide what cards to discard. Nah, just kidding, I think Brooklet Hill is just so important, I like playing four. Um, it's very probable that 4-3 is probably better, but like the other way around, but the way I play it is like easier to use, I guess. <laughs> uh, Cynthia is just uh, get a new hand of 6 after shuffling your hand in. Um, kind of a less aggressive version of Professor Sycamore, which is discard your hand and draw 7 new cards. Pokemon is very draw power heavy, for those of you who haven't played it. It's really ridiculous how fast you can go through your deck, especially with Octillery and these supporters. Of course you can only play one supporter per turn, but that goes without saying, right? That would be really powerful. Um, N is that disruptive card I talked about. Both players shuffle their hands in their deck and then draw as many cards as they have prize cards. So if you are winning, you've taken a lot of prize cards, you have very few remaining, and that means you're gonna draw like one or two cards. You might not draw very useful cards, and that's why Auxiliary is so important to, you know, get some more access to cards, because the more cards you have, the more options you have. And they have Guzma, which is kind of like Lycan Rocket, lets you drag up bench Pokemon and target them down. It is as a supporter, so if you play this, you generally won't be playing a, playing a whole lot of cards, but thanks to Auxiliary, you might just be able to draw a couple more cards. It's also nice if one of your Pokemon is trapped active. Um, I'm, I'm trying to explain not too much right here. Like, I don't want this whole video to be talking. So I'm just going to go through them quickly, and then you'll see how the cards play out in a more practical setting. 
Um, speaking of getting trapped in the active spot, Floatstone is also there to retreat Pokemon for free. Um, normally you have to pay energy to retreat, but Floatstone just makes it free altogether. Um, Fury Belt or Fighting Fury Belt boosts your HP to, by 40 and then boosts your attacks by 10 damage. If it's attached to a Pokemon, of course. Um, and then we got Strong Energy and Beast Energy, that, which I've gone over, and then 8 Fight Energy to make sure that we can hit Max Elixir and Beast Ring. So yeah, let's uh, hop right into a game. Or let's try at least. Alright, I just got my butt kicked by a Malamar deck, which is a pretty hard matchup. I don't play any kind of counter cards. There are some good cards you can play against that deck, but I don't really play any of them. So I decided to skip that game and try to give you guys a good one. Because I made some dumb mistakes. Can't have that. This is a very bad hand. <laughs> this is not a good hand at all. All I got going for me is that I can uh, I can hit for 30, but you need a lot more for this deck. Fortunately, I do have Brocklet Hill, so I can start getting some Pokemon out. Uh, his hand doesn't look very good. Uh, his start isn't very great either. You don't want to start with Tapu Lele. This card's ability only works when you play it down from your hand. It lets you search your supporter, which is very nice indeed. Um, I have tempted to get a Rock Ruff here and start attacking to it, but if I draw into an Ultra Ball, I want to have access to uh, Auxiliary so I can get out of this bad hand. And, you know, this is, this this hard, this hand would be okay if I had a supporter. Basically, I would be happy with this first turn. So yeah, I guess next turn I can get Diancy or Rock Ruff. Ooh, it's Guard of War. Um, well, I'd really like to draw uh, a Fury Belt, to, so I can KO his Ralts. Uh, Beast Rain is not Fury Belt, so I will get Rock Ruff here. And let's see, I don't want to Guzma quite yet. I'd rather force him to KO this, uh, this boss mode right here. We can just tap with Lele a bit to make it easier to kill later. Like, I could have Guzmaed up the Ralts and did some damage to it, but hopefully, he won't be able to evolve it and I can Guzmaed next turn. Hmm. He, he did Brock with Hill, he didn't grab anything, so that makes me think he doesn't play Auxiliary, because he would have grabbed a Reverate if he could have. Hmm. He's going to commit a lot of energy to this Tapu Lele. I can't blame him, because. You know, it's looking pretty good. And I guess I'll grab, I'll put this up. Chances are I won't top deck a good card. Oh, that's actually an okay card. Let's see. Um, <laughs> I can go for the surprise attack with Rock Ruff. That doesn't seem like a very good play to me. I can see he has the assault vest on, which makes him do like nothing or makes strong energy not a good card. This is tough. What do I grab here? Guess I'll take the baby puzzle and just attack him again. It doesn't look great for me either way. I'll just see what I get. This type of Lele is his biggest threat anyway, so I want to put damage on that. Alright, Max Elixir, that's good. Um, I can get rid of the Assault Fests this turn, but I don't have to. I guess I will Max Elixir to Rock Ruff. Oh, I guess I didn't get anything. That kind of sucks. Okay, well then. Well, if he attacks my, uh, my baby Buzzwool, I can Slash Hammer him for a KO. If he KOs my Rockruff, same thing. If he doesn't KO Buzzwool, that's great. It's not a turn for me to draw a good card. Draw some more with um, my good friend Auxiliary. I would really like to get rid of his only Ralts, but it doesn't look like it's in the cards right now. His hand doesn't seem very good either. He might be sitting on an N or something. Oh, I got Sycamore, that's good. I don't really want to get rid of any of this though. Um, so I guess I'll Field Blower and Guzma. And try to find a strong energy. 
I only draw like two cards though, so the odds aren't too good. But I can also draw a Lycan Rock. Yeah. I'll get another Remorade first. Or I guess I'll get Dianzi. That actually works okay. Field Blower, I guess. Let's see, three for one, see what I get. If I get Strong or Fury Belts, I can kill the Rolls now. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, I'll just do this then. I really don't want to get rid of the beast wing. Beast ring, it's pretty good. Just hurt his rounds instead. And if it stays active, great. If not, he has to waste energy retreating it. I could like Sycamore and go aggressive, but I can't really KO this Tapu Lele without a lot of damage boosts. I guess a Lycan Rock could have killed it. But Tapu Lele overall, not the biggest threat ever. It's his biggest threat right now, but it's, in the long term it's not that great of a Pokemon. And now if he takes a KO, I can Beast String and then Sycamore. Yeah, so now he's going after the Rock Ruff, which is what I expected. And now he's got Candy Garden for a while. Gross. Well, at least I got some damage onto it. Let's see. I guess I'll use this Buzzwole because it's harder for him to KO next turn. But now I can Beast Ring. Ooh, nice. So what I can do here is... Um, okay, so I can do the very risky thing. Get my, um, my Buzzwole GX and like put all this stuff on it. But then it's very, very likely that he'll just KO it with his uh, Mew. Well, he would need a Larguzma, which he probably doesn't have because it took him forever to play one. So he'd have to top deck another one. I think this is kind of what I have to go for. So Beast Ring. And I plan to Sycamore, so I don't actually want to um, draw more cards with artillery because I just probably just draw more cards I would discard I think um, yeah I don't really want to like I don't need that much this turn so I'd rather be conservative with my draws here another beast ring wow sick um, well I'm out of baby buzzwolves in my deck and I can play this card later so I'll just touch hammer for now if he has Guzma and DC or Guzma, double fairy is actually what he needs. Congrats, he can kill my Buzzwell GX. If not, I can kill one of his Pokemon this turn. It's looking very bad for him. Yeah, okay, so that was a good test victory, victory I guess. Gardevoir, not the most meta deck in the world, but at least I got to win a lot last time. It's much less embarrassing, so let's uh, head into the editing room and see how this toaster holds up in editing. See ya.